how to do the tsunami warning project. First, click the link and it will open up for you your very own uh, copy after you come over. And I think there's a link over here that says my document. You click that and it, it creates your version of the document for you. I'm going to open up this part of the document, which is the main um, file itself. Okay, you're going to first going to want to change this to put your name there. Although when you open up your own copy, we all know that Google puts your name at the beginning of the file itself. The next slide gives you some perspective. There's a little pin in our Google map right there, our Google Earth map. That's the island that we're going to use for this project. We are going to play the role of Tsunami Warning Center officials, and we are getting ready to install a new Tsunami Warning system for the people on this island. Here's an up-close view of this actual island, the Juan Fernandez Island chain. This one is the Robinson Caruso. Uh, it kind of looks like a dolphin jumping out of the water, which I've always kind of liked. There's one little population center on this island, and it's right here. The actual name of this town is called San Juan Batista. And it's a little town of about 850 to 900 people. They live right here. Unfortunately for them, they live facing the area where tsunamis would come from. So we need to protect these folks. So there are four objectives. Objective number one, here are the steps for objective number one. It asks you to write the answers that you may have for these questions in the speaker notes on slide five. Well, we're right now on slide number four. So slide five, okay, has a picture. Here's an arrow pointing to this feature right here. And down in the speaker notes, and I can grab and move this so it's a little bit bigger and easier to see, I'm being asked, what is this feature right here? What is this tectonic feature, this dark blue or black line right here? I am going to type my answer, what I think that is, right here. Now, why does this pose a risk to all of our friends on the island over here? That question should be answered right here on speaker notes. So that's objective number one. Objective two, this is where you're going to place some warning buoys because we know the role that buoys play in a tsunami warning system. You're going to place four of them. Use the scale in the red box to measure the distance on the map on slide seven. Here's what this means. And please pay special attention because this is where kids have the most struggle. Now, I am going to place four buoys somewhere in here to protect my folks on this island. To do that, I'm going to come up and grab a shape. I'm going to insert a shape. You can pick any shape you like. I like triangles because they most closely mimic the actual shape of buoys in the ocean. Here's my buoy. I'm going to place one right there. Now, I need to measure the distance from the island to this buoy. So how I do that? Well, right down here is a scale measuring tool for this image that we got off of Google Earth. So the distance from this white line to this white line is 100 miles on this map. So I'm going to take a pencil maybe or my finger and hold it up next to this distance right here until I know how far that is on my pencil or on my finger. And then I'm going to use my pencil to go, okay, or lay, put my finger up to the screen and go, that's about 100, that's 200, that's 300, that's 400, that's 500. Maybe that's like 500 miles, okay? So I need to know the distance from my island to each buoy, and here is why. After I've placed all four buoys, I need to use this formula, time equals distance divided by speed, to determine how much evacuation time, for objective three, my people have if a tsunami was to start near this buoy. Well, if this buoy is 500 miles, right, away from my island, and that would be the distance, so 500 miles is my distance, and if tsunami waves 
move at 500 miles per hour in the open ocean, which is S, all I have to do is take D divided by S, and that will give me my evacuation time. I need to do that measure, take that measure of miles and divide it by 500. I need to do that four times, one for each buoy. And where I put those answers uh, is right under this slide. See buoy one, two, three, four? So what I would do is down here, I would say uh, my buoy number one is 500 miles. That's my D divided by 500 for speed. That equals one. Now one what? That's one hour. So that means my people have one hour of lead or evacuation time if a tsunami starts at that buoy. So that's great, but what if my what if a tsunami starts at buoy number two instead? Well, that's fine. I can measure wherever it is I've put buoy number two and say that's 475 miles. Great. I'll come down here and I'll say buoy two is 475 miles away from my island. And I'm going to divide that by the speed at which uh, open water uh, tsunamis move. And I'm going to do quick 475 divided by 500, and that's going to give me 0.95 hours. Now, if I told people, hey, you better run, you only have 0.95 hours until a tsunami hits your coast. They're not going to know what 0.95 hours means. In their head, they'll probably round it to 60 minutes, right? Because that's an hour. But they don't have 60 minutes. They have something less than 60 minutes. So let's multiply this by 60, and that tells us exactly how many minutes. That's 57 minutes until the wave arrives. So I would put down here, I would say that 0.95 hours equals 57 minutes. We all know how many minutes an hour is, but we don't necessarily know how many minutes 0.95 hours is. So that's why I would put that there. This is crucial because 57 minutes and 60 minutes is a big difference. Because if a wave hits the shore 57 minutes, and I still think I have a few more minutes to be out of where I need to be, um, I could be caught in the tsunami and that would not be good, as you have seen from the videos that we have watched leading up to this project. So measure, measure the distance from each buoy to your island. Keep track of that here. Divide each distance by the speed that a tsunami moves in the open water, and you're gonna get your evacuation time in hours. The last objective is objective four. It is asking you some questions at the bottom of the slide. Just type your answers where it says type your answer here in this speaker notes section. The last slide communicates when this project is due, but if you're watching this right now, chances are you're still able to hand in this project. So disregard this over here because you need to get this done as soon as possible. Most likely, of course, before the quarter ends. Okay, that's how to do the Tsunami Warning Project. I wish you luck and be smart because the people of San Juan Batista are depending on you.